Hello everyone, this is Craig Wessels from Yank on the Footy and welcome to this short episode 330. I'm coming to you from balmy Sandusky, Ohio. Spring has finally sprung and uh, looking forward to the end of the school year coming up in just a couple of weeks. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of you who reached out uh, wishing me well. It's been a rather hectic last three weeks or so. Uh, my mom had uh, hip replacement surgery and she is doing well. She is getting around extraordinarily well. Uh, and uh, Tuesday of last week, so a week ago today, I had uh, surgery as well to have a hernia repaired. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I seem to be doing okay. I'm getting a little stir crazy because I'm not allowed to drive a car until I have my appointment on Thursday that they can check to make sure everything's okay. And, you know, they were concerned, uh, well, we want to make sure you're okay in case you had an accident, you know, that, that you know, nothing was going to happen. And my thinking was, couldn't I get in an accident as a passenger as well? But I wasn't, you know, trying to cheat them or get them into trouble or anything like that. So, hey, you know, I've had uh, my wife dropping me off at work. Went back this week uh, for the first time, basically in two weeks. So um, glad to get back to see my students and uh, get going on the end of the year. Now, in this short episode, I wanted to touch on a uh, a topic that's been in the news over the last several days, and I've just I've not felt well enough to actually sit down and and share my thoughts about this, uh, but uh, I think I have kind of a unique a uh, bit of insight with regards to this um, this topic. And over the last week or so, we have seen uh, coming out the discussion on whether or not to borrow ideas from American sports uh, with regards to awarding premiership rings to players um, that maybe did not play in the grand final or did not were not on the winning side of the grand final when the the, the club played, and I thought as an American I, I could go ahead and you know share my thoughts on this. Um, not saying that I'm right. Um, I'm again I'm not that American that's advocating that you know Australia needs to to pick up and follow everything that we're doing because you know we're not exactly the uh, the pinnacle of having our act together. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of things we do great that that I think other places around the world would love, you know, would probably love if they did the same thing. But it's not my place to to uh, to say, you know, I think this should happen or this should happen or this shouldn't happen. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a government teacher by trade um, at the high school where I teach, and and you know, I I kind of follow along with some of the things that are going on in politics in Australia, but. Uh, Far be it for me to have uh, a say so on it. It's none of my business. Okay. Absolutely none of my business. Although I do like to follow and see what's going on. But I want, like I said, I wanted to get into talking about the uh, the ring situation. And, uh, you know, folks, if you enjoy the podcast, I do hope you'll head over to my website and leave a five star review over there. Get on the mailing list. That's at yankonthefooty.com. You can follow me on my socials as well. And, you know, when I first started following the game back in 2016, I don't think I got to watch the 2016 grand final. I think the first one that I watched was 2017, the Richmond uh, first premiership in many, many years. And uh, the the medal ceremony was, I think, awesome. I think it's, it's a very inspirational thing to see what happens there. And, uh, you know, here in sports in... North America, the United States, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NFL. Uh, there are these very gaudy, uh, audacious, uh, or ostentatious, maybe might be the better word, uh, rings that are awarded to to the players that are, you know, that cost tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. These things are massive. You know, you've probably seen the images of Tom Brady where he has a ring on quite a few of his fingers. OK, Michael Jordan uh, as well with many of them, LeBron James with a couple of them uh, through his playing career as well. But I think that the Premiership Medal Award is very unique. OK, I I, I quite enjoy it. Um, 
and just seeing the relationship between you know the players when the players are getting their medals from youngsters uh and the youngsters getting the uh the the cap because they're that club won the premiership i think it's just an awesome awesome thing and i know you know it sounds like it's been uh collingwood that has um been at the forefront of this um and i guess there are a few companies that are looking at putting these things together uh, the nrl does award championship uh rings to players um and you know i i, I guess i understand the idea that uh that sometimes a player will miss out and i'm and i'm gonna you know as a cat supporter as you can see i i'm i'm thinking right now of max holmes who had a little bit of a niggle during the week of the 2022 grand final was not able to participate and you know, had been part of the 22 for the bulk of the season and missed out on the grand final so he is not technically a premiership player now he played as i'd said most of the season with the club and it established himself uh, as a pretty quick little uh, midfielder, quick sidebar. Really glad they re-signed him. Tyson Stengel up next, um, but he missed out on that due to injury. And I and I think it 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 kind of comes off sounding cold, uh, or you know, heartless, if you will. But it's become tradition. This is this is what has happened with the AFL, and I'm assuming the VFL as well. Uh, before the VFL absorbed uh, some of the other clubs from around the country to make it a national competition but i you know i i i find it rather unique and you know the one of the things that has really appealed to me about the afl and i've talked about this in many episodes and i did it uh not too long ago on an episode is the idea that the uh the athletes and you know the coaches and that sort of thing the orbits that they live their life in are not too dissimilar from those of the fans uh, and the supporters because they're not, you know, they're not paid such an exorbitant amount of money that, that you're never going to see them. Yes. They, they make a very good living. Okay. They earn, they earn a very good salary, but that is for a relatively short period of time. If they stay on these lists, OK, you know, you, you can have a player that might play 10 years and by the time they're finishing up that 10 years of their career, maybe they're making. Five hundred thousand dollars in a season. And, you know, sure, that's if you if you plan accordingly, that can last you quite a bit of time. You invest it. Hopefully you've learned a skill that you can utilize, you know, and do after you finish playing. Um, not everybody can be a broadcaster. Not everybody's going to be doing, you know, podcasts or radio shows or well, I guess you can, because look at me, I'm doing one. But, uh, you know, maybe you've learned a skill set or a trade that you're going to do it afterwards. Um, maybe get involved in banking, real estate, whatever the case may be. But, you know, you've you're you're not it's not a situation where it's a LeBron James or, you know, a, uh, you know, a uh, an athlete here in the U.S., you know, a, an NBA player, a major league baseball player who's earning 25, 30, 40 million dollars a year U.S., which, you know, 40 million U.S., I think, is probably closer to about 60 million Australian. Um, and. I, I've often joked that, uh, you know. If you're a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers or when I was still following the NBA, the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James was playing with Cleveland, you weren't going to run into uh, LeBron at the little corner grocery store because his wife had called him after the game and said, hey, make sure you pick, pick up a carton of milk on the way home because we're out of milk and grab a loaf of bread, too. You're not going to run into LeBron there. There's a possibility that you could run into an athlete or two that plays in the AFL at a restaurant at a store out and about because they're they're not priced out of the orbit that that many other people live in sure they're making a lot more money in that short term in their career that they have but they're still doing a lot of those things for themselves okay so you know i if this is going to be an instance where i guess with the rings uh where they're going to be you know paid for by a company who's going to maybe advertise and maybe i don't know maybe a uh 
maybe a deal can be worked out where the 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 company that designs the rings and and I don't know who you give them to and I'm going to get into that in just a minute because like I said I have a little bit of uh, firsthand knowledge with this and you'll want to watch this over on my YouTube channel as well when I get it uploaded because you'll actually be able to see uh, what it is that I'm referencing here. Um, but you know when you your club wins a championship, who's going to get the rings? Because like I said in the in the NFL, you know the players, the coaches. Uh, everybody that was on that club, the World Series champ in, in Major League Baseball, you know, even if you came up and played like one game, you're probably going to be getting a championship ring. And it's going to be this huge diamond encrusted thing with, you know, however they design it. But what I was saying before is it maybe there'll be some sort of an arrangement where a jewelry company becomes the one of the advertisers on the jumper. Uh, or, you know, within the stadium uh, for the defending premieres. I know I know that the defending premieres get to wear the, uh, the jumper with the gold AFL logo on it for the subsequent season. Maybe there could be an incorporation of that jewelry company's uh, logo in the in the advertising on the jumpers as well for the club that won the previous year. But then I guess we have to decide, you know, who's are they going to give the. Uh, you know, one of these fifty thousand dollar rings that they're talking about to the senior coach, to all of the assistant coaches, to the runners. Uh, is the team doctor going to get one? Is the the club president going to get one? Are they going to get something that's scaled back? Is there going to be you know? And 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 this is one of the things that I worry about in sport here in the United States, um, especially with collegiate sports. And collegiate sports are have been a unique thing here in the United States for many many years. And and of course you know the you know there are you know some of the major sports of course you know college football, um, college basketball, men's and women's college basketball uh, draw a lot of people. Hockey is big in in many places as well. But you know you have countless other college sports as well. But in the last few years, college sports have changed the way things have. Uh, been doing and conducting themselves they've introduced what's known as the nil or nil money and it stands for name image and likeness so you have you have athletes student athletes the key term they're student they're going to college in theory to get an education to go to class um and you know they're participating in this athletic event now many of these different sports you know football uh in, is one that uh many of the athletes that are on the football team or the basketball team are getting full academic scholarships or athletic scholarships which pay the tuition of their school tuition room and board that sort of thing but now and and again i'm not, I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing but now in collegiate sports Athletes are able to be able to sign what are known as NIL deals, where basically they be, they become advertisers. They're they're selling products, if you will. They're put their name is being placed on you know a product or a company. So this used to be reserved for professional athletes: Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, LeBron James. Um, you know there there were a lot of athletes, and I'm you know I'm having a hard time you know. Uh, figuring out some of them but there, yeah there were ones that would advertise beer or they would advertise soft drinks or they would advertise shoes uh, you know the air jordans and all of those types of things were were things where you know those athletes were making huge amounts of money with their shoe deals and things of that nature but now it's happening with these collegiate athletes who are 18 19 20 years old and I just saw that there was a basketball player who I think played one year at Utah State University, which is, you know, it's a pretty good sized school, but it's not exactly a, a hotbed for college athletics. And I guess he just signed a new NIL deal for $2 million. Again, student athlete, student athlete. I have to, I, I want to ask the question, how hard are you going to study to work towards this degree if you know you're going to be paid two million dollars just simply because you are who you are 
there's no guarantee that this kid is ever going to go play in the NBA or play in the NBL or go play in another professional league in Europe or wherever they might be. There's no guarantee that's going to happen. But somebody has decided that that this the name image like this thing is worth paying him $2 million to, to leave the university he was at for a year and transfer to another school. So it's almost like he became a collegiate, unrestricted free agent and was able to go sign somewhere else. Now, Utah State doesn't get any compensation for that. They've got a spot to fill on their basketball roster. And what's what's interesting is that in many instances, the um, the players, especially ones that are in basketball, quite often will only if if this is somebody who thinks that they're you know, and, and and the odds are and the 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 general consensus is that they're going to be uh, an NBA player that they may go to that college and sign an NIL deal where they might play now they may play for one season and then declare for the NBA draft and leave the college maybe having completed a few classes I mean I I, I would love to see what they've done as far as the uh, what they've done as far as the um, actual requirements of these students going, these student athletes going to class. Okay. I've, I've had plenty of students who have gone on to play collegiate sports and have gone on to have great athletic endeavors in college and have gone on to have great careers after that. But uh, I just really wonder where we're going with that. Okay. Now, and I know that got a little off track from the ring situation, but you know, I wonder if, you know, I guess the big question for me is who's going to be paying for these things? Because if somebody's going to come along and say, well, you know, here's a club that we we've we've been able to generate X amount of dollars in revenue through memberships and things like that with our club. If you're a member of your club, do you want your membership dollars to be going for paying for a $50,000 ring for, you know, everybody that's on the playing list that may not have even, you know, gotten a senior game during the course of the year. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. And, you know, it, it, what's going to happen if it's a club that is, you know, that wins a grand final, that's maybe not as fiscally solvent as some of the other clubs. Now, I guess if they work it out to where you got a, a, a company that's that's manufacturing the rings and there becomes sort of a sponsorship type thing, kind of like the crypto.com things that we see circling the stadiums and circling the games all the time. If there's something like that where that company comes along and contributes that, um, or if maybe the corporate sponsors uh, for each of the clubs want to pony up that money in addition to it, I guess that would be okay. But I, I just think the 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 uniqueness of the awarding of the premiership medals is it's awesome okay you know because, because when the it's instantaneous because the the ring ceremonies for winning the like an NFL Super Bowl or or the Major League World Series or the NBA championships or the NHL I think the NHL gives out rings as well usually what will happen is that 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 team will have their ring ceremony, if you will, at like their subsequent season's home opener, their first game of the season. So if the Kansas City Chiefs win their um, the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, like they did last year, I believe there'll be some sort of a ceremony at the outset of their probably their first home game this year where the players will be given their Super Bowl rings because it, they're not pre-made. They're not already they're not already made for them because you're not going to make a ring for two teams. Now they do that with shirts. You'll always, you know, because you'll always see when somebody has won, you'll always see, you know, them with a championship hat to put on or this the t-shirt, hey, we're the world champions of whatever sport it happens to be. Of course, all those ones for the other team that didn't win and end, end up getting shipped off to places where people are less fortunate um and, you know, you sometimes see, hey, the Super Bowl champ, you know, Buffalo Bills. And if you know anything about the NFL, the Buffalo Bills have been in the Super Bowl four years in a row, but they lost all four years. Um, so, again, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. 
but I certainly, I certainly don't want it to tarnish this jewelry reference there, the metal ceremony, because I think that is something that is unique to the AFL to footy. It's awesome. I love seeing it. The, you know, the, it, and it's not pomp and circumstance. It's, it's, it's folksy. It's, it, it reinforces what I said earlier that the athletes in the AFL are much closer to the orbit of the supporters, the fans, the members, that sort of thing than athletes are here in the United States, in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, that type of thing. Okay. So I don't necessarily think it's a terrible idea. I just, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's going to be fair for members to have to pay higher membership fees in order to defray the cost of these rings. Uh, and I hope that that's not what's going to end up happening here. And, and, and as I mentioned to you folks, I, I did say I kind of had a unique situation here because, um, you know, I, I have been involved in, in coaching uh, for a time. Uh, while I've been a teacher, I, I was a junior varsity baseball coach at a school that I was a substitute teacher at before I got hired full time. My team was terrible. They were awful. I think we won nine games in four years. We were bad. OK, but the school where I teach Perkins High School back in 1999, we had a phenomenal high school football team that year. And we won the state championship in 1999. It was the first time that our school had won a state championship in football. We'd had a lot of success in cross-country running, in track, in swimming, uh, but never in football. It's a very competitive thing. So the players actually got, the players that were on the team were actually given by our booster club at the school, kind of think members like, at, at, you know, in a, in a club member, but not, it's not as broad, um, I guess think think more like the the members of a local footy club, if you will, uh, who partake in that a local footy netball league or club, and the kids were allowed to to receive a a, a ring that would that had to be the cost of it had to believe I believe be less than one hundred and twenty dollars or something like that, or it was going to violate uh, Ohio High School Athletic Association rules, and they would have gotten in trouble for that. So the kids that were on the team got a, a state championship ring. Now, I, I coached, I was coaching for four years there. I have, and I'll put it up in front of the camera here, I have a state championship ring for, as one of the coaches. And that's our, it's our ring right there, the Perkins Pirates. It's got the number one in there. On the side of it, it's got my name. And uh, I think it says 15-0 and 0 down on that side. Uh, and on the other side, it says Pirates number one, Division four. So we won the state championship in 1999. And all the coaches on the coaching staff got one of these rings. Now, Unfortunately, I'm okay, as far as the ring goes, unfortunately, but fortunately for me, if you're watching, I can't keep it on anymore, okay? I've lost such a significant amount of weight that this ring is way too big for me to wear again. So I don't mind keeping it locked away in a drawer because it's, I hope it never fits me again. I guess unless I get it sized down a little bit, but you know that costs money to do that. So... You know, it was it was unique that we we were awarded these things from the boosters as well. And the coaches got ones that actually were a little bit more expensive than the one that, that the players got. I mean, it has like these little diamond flakes in it and such, you know. So I think this ended up costing about $500. And I think I had to pay maybe 100 of that, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, we got a, we got a state championship ring. Of course, I'm wearing a silicone wedding ring right now also because my other my regular wedding ring doesn't fit me anymore either. And the bad thing about that is this one does not have my the date of my anniversary embossed on the inside of it like my other ring does. So I have to go back and look at that one every once in a while. No, I'm kidding. I know when it is. I think. Yeah, I do. It's in December. But, you know, I just I just wanted to share my thoughts on this because I thought it was a is a unique um, situation. And, and I. And I guess some of the wealthier clubs. You know, a Collingwood, a West Coast, and yeah, I know West Coast is not quite in their premiership window, um, might be able to pull this off a little bit more readily. Maybe Essendon as well because of the size of their membership base. Um, Richmond, 
size of their membership base, although based upon what we saw with the Bulldogs last week, you wouldn't know that they had a membership base quite that big because there were a lot of people dressed up as empty seats. Um, but, you know, it's it's not a terrible idea. I just wonder who's going to get stuck footing the bill for it. Okay. So, and I, and I don't want it to take away from the, the, uh, the uniqueness and the, and like I said, the folksiness, if you will, of the premiership medal awards. I think that is just such a neat, neat thing that they do. Okay. You know, at the, you know, the NFL, you know, they give out the, the, the Vince Lombardi trophy and they hoist it up and everybody's got the confetti going around like at the AFL grand final. But, um, everything is just so much more expensive in the NFL and in major league baseball and the NBA. And I, and I, I don't want this to hurt the AFL's bottom line. Okay. The premiership medal, you know, I, I guess, <clears throat> do you, you know, as an alternative, if they decide not to go with the rings and again, I'm not saying that they should or should not, but if they decide not to go with the rings, And I know a lot of purists are going to say this is a terrible idea, and I'm just suggesting it. I'm not saying it should happen, but do they, do you maybe award a premiership medal to, you know, any players who played maybe in at least half of the club's senior games that year? Yeah, you know, if somebody got one game, if somebody was a debutante in round 18, but never saw, you know, an AFL contest the rest of the season. I don't know if they, they would necessarily get one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And again, I'm just using an arbitrary number. Maybe if they played in half of the games during the course of the season, maybe they get themselves uh, an opportunity to have the, uh, a premiership medal. You know, maybe they don't award it during the game. Maybe it's afterwards out of sight, that sort of thing. I don't know. And again, me as kind of a purist, I kind of think you get the medal if you played in the game. Okay. I think, and now, since they have the tactical subs rather than the injury sub, you could certainly debate whether or not the injury subs should get one if they didn't get into the game. So that's my take on the uh, on the ring situation. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. And, uh, you know, drop me a line over at my website, yankonthefooty.com. I will get this uploaded onto YouTube um, later on this week. Um Maybe even tomorrow morning uh, at work before my school day begins. Um, I'll get it uploaded before the school day starts. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. And you can follow me on all my socials. Uh, all of those are linked on my website, yankonthefooty.com. I do spend a lot of time on Facebook, uh, a Yank on the Footy podcast, over on Twitter or X, at yank underscore on. A Yank on the Footy over on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn as well. Just look for Craig Wessels. And again, if you want to reach out to me, a yank on the footy at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. If you have an idea for somebody who would be a great guest, and uh, I was a guest on uh, a podcast last Friday evening and had a great discussion with Adam, and as soon as that episode comes out on his show, I will share that with you. Um, truly, truly enjoyed that discussion. But I do hope you'll get on the mailing list. I hope you'll share the episode with your friends and family. Look out for one another. Check up on your friends. If you need to talk to somebody, please, please reach out. Give them a call. Find out if they're okay. And if you're not okay, please let somebody know because the world is a much better place with you here. Those numbers for help are in the show notes of every episode of this podcast. I do hope you'll check them out if you need to do so for Australia and the United States. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all the kind words, especially you know for those of you who reached out after my surgery. Um, really, really, really appreciate that. It was just awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think I have a great group of I know I can say acquaintances, but I'd like to say friends uh, who I engage with uh, regarding the podcast and footy and other things like that. Um, I can't thank you enough for that. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, may your dribble kick never hit the post. I will catch you later. And this has been episode 330 of A Yank on the Footy. Share the podcast with your friends and family. Get on that mailing list over there to yankonthefooty.com, folks. And until next time, cheers and goodbye.